What's good, everyone? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to reveal or unleash or pull the curtain over our co-host for Forbidden Flavors. If anyone's not familiar with what Forbidden Flavors is, it's going to be our spinoff segment about adult topics and things of that nature. So, without further ado, you are going to meet Tia, a.k.a. Zone, and let me know what you all think about her. Is she uh, you know, fit for the job, or we got to yank her out of here? Stay tuned. Man, you know, I was thinking about it. We don't have an official intro yet, and I'm not using my old intro for these flavor, forbidden flavor segments. So, yeah, this is going to be say, welcome you all, uh, get comfortable, you know, have a seat, pull out a drink, and just, you know, let's meet here. Let's meet zoned. That's our intro for the day. So, <laughs> sprinkle of flavor it is. Let's get it. So, for the most part, today, we're going to have a few different segments of my interview with Tia, a.k.a. Zone, and you all can look forward to listening of how I found her, a little bit about her, uh, just in general, so she can warm up, warm up to my audience, or our audience, I should say, and then we'll get a little bit of, you know, test her brain a little bit, pick her brain on a couple of topics, so she'll, she wants to talk about... Uh, Juneteenth, which is a hot topic in the African American community, community and uh, in the communities of America as a whole, and then we're gonna access some freaky stuff so we can, you know, let her elaborate about why people are against threesomes. Stay tuned for these segments. What is going on, everybody? Today is, I'm so excited. I got my drink in my hand. I done drunk damn near half of it already. But this is going to be our first official kickoff of Forbidden Flavors. And why am I so excited about today's uh, episode with you all is because I'm going to introduce my new co host. We have spoken so much. We've almost talked them a damn near an hour before we even started recording. So uh, that's how much energy we have. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about her before she talks about herself. Uh, I needed somebody who complimented me in a way that they didn't give a single fuck about what they spoke about or anybody's feelings. And I love it. Like she has her own personality, her own opinion, and she stands on it. And I think that you all are going to like this uh, segment of it because she covers so many topics and she knows about so many things and she likes sports too. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like this is match made in heaven. So her official name is Tia, but we're going to call her Zoned. For the rest of the episode so just so y'all know that's our go that, that's our government but through the segment we're gonna call a zone and um hopefully you know with these episodes all y'all all of you all out there who uh you know have topics that's difficult to talk about i love a male female perspective um that's one of my biggest things i'm like to just hear myself talking and even if it's different like y'all y'all are here y'all are here like even if it's different she'll stand on whatever it is and we have so many uh forbidden flavor topics the whole gist of forbidden flavors to talk about things that are uncomfortable now my show in general is all about uncomfortable topics but this one is strictly this uncomfortable topics sex related of uh, anything related you know that you want to know that we can we out here for you so these are not our official Forbidden Flavors episodes because we will have an intro and everything while I introduce her properly, but I want you all to get comfortable with her as I am because you'll love her. So without further ado, Zone, let's tell, tell us about you. Tell us about you. Let them hear your voice, sis. Let them hear your voice. But first, let me say, I don't even like my own voice, but I got to live <laughs> with it. But <laughs> seriously, I am a very opinionated person. I'm not going to say I'm not, but it's just my opinion, not facts. But mm-hmm. I do believe in everybody has an opinion. I don't disrespect you. You don't disrespect me. So basically, to tell you about me, I'm a very spiritual person, not religious, because I'm very against religion to a degree. But you have your religion. I don't take it from you. But I'm more of a person that deals in the astrology world, more of a tarot reader. Um, mm. I love doing house readings i do blessings i do a lot in the spiritual world so if you hear me say a lot of things i say it comes from a spiritual perspective not just a not just a religious perspective or just a something i read online it's a spiritual perspective i believe in talking to the whole not even the holy ghost i apologize i talk Mm -hmm. to my heavenly father on a regular i believe in talking to my ancestors i believe in talking to my angels my guides i believe all black folks should go back to that versus relying on religion because religion kind of like 
throws me off a lot because it's very contradictory to me mm. but i'm not going to take it from anybody so long story short when you get to hear me talk everything i say is just my opinion never a fact you don't have to believe it or listen to it but again that's what I am. I'm going to give you my opinion, not nothing that I read online, not nothing that's going to tell you to do this and do that. Just something that I believe strongly on. Okay. That ain't nothing wrong with that. We're here to ruffle some feathers anyway, so we love opinionated people here. So where are you originally from, Zone? Ah. Uh, what, what, what you claiming? What you claiming? What set you claiming? What you repping? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going, I'm going to say I spent most of my childhood in South Carolina, my favorite place, which mm. is a little town called something. You probably won't know about it because it's a little bit far off of Columbia, but it's a little town. Very mm. few people know about it. But most of my childhood afterwards is in D.C. D.C. and North Carolina, my two favorite, my places to live. Root, root, chocolate city. Okay, now that's what I'm talking about. I like. I actually believe uh, me and her were Facebook friends off of. I don't know. I probably had some common DC friend because I, I live in DC myself. Just so y'all don't know, and I was so moved by all of her like posts. I'm like, and then it's nothing like a, like I'm talking about. She, she will say whatever, and she don't care. And I love that. I love the rawness. I love the rawness. I love the freeness because today society people are so afraid to say what they what they feel truly. Um. And uh, I love it. I love it. So this is my co-host, you all. We have so much planned for everybody. Um, like I said, she does the readings and things. I'm not in that realm. Uh, we'll try to get some interaction with you all if you all want to uh, get comfortable. But I just want to these unofficial episodes with me and her. I just want you all to get a feel of who she is, uh, what she can speak about and, you know, get comfortable with us. So when, they, when we get when we get rolling, we're going to be rolling. So uh very, very appreciative of her, you know, giving her time. You know, we got this this thing is hard with being on two separate sides of the world, mm-hmm. but we but we make it happen. You know, she's a worker like me, but hey, we make shit happen. And I love I just I can't say enough. I love her her, her being opinionated as she is. I love it. So he say that now. I say that now, then we're gonna be arguing <laughs> here hearing, hearing us slam them, slam them mics and I'm I'm gonna walk off the stage because I'm like I don't agree with that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm going Kanye West on y'all. <laughs> Go crazy on them. So <laughs> yeah, so uh today we have a few topics that we are gonna talk about. Um the way we're gonna do this is segments now. Uh that's our that's our new way of doing things on the show, just to keep it organized as possible. So this segment here was you know strictly to allow you all to meet her. Uh, hear her voice uh, I don't know what else she have to offer but it's an open book and I like that about I like that about about her you know I don't know what she's gonna say but I know she's gonna say it if she wants to say it so that's the good part that's the good part about it you all so uh, get ready stay tuned as we uh, move to our first segment all right all right we are back and we got to have a bit of an icebreaker conversation just because this is our first few episodes together speaking. So something popular in the, I guess, America, I can't say black community anymore, uh, is the Juneteenth holiday that just got passed. Uh, it's a federal holiday. Everybody gets a day off. Woo-hoo-hoo! Yes, we are so excited about that, right? And I'll, before we uh, made this session, me and Ho were just talking about how we felt about it, and the conversation went on a very long time. <laughs> just so you all know, <laughs> just just so you all know, and a lot of you all may not agree with either of our takes on Juneteenth holiday, but we're gonna put it out there just how two normal people feel about something. So I actually let her go first. Um, as far as what do you feel about the the Juneteenth holiday? So me, I have no like real problems with it i just felt Mm -hmm. like if it was that important to the government why didn't they Mm -hmm. hold like a press conference in the middle of the day like they do with everything else Mm -hmm. but when it comes down to black folks situation and black people laws and things they Mm -hmm. slide it in on us under the under the umbrella quietly it's never Mm -hmm. a big announcement because Mm -hmm. like you said it came at the mid at night time when everybody's gone to bed and news is not even on and first of all i probably would have been fine with it if i got the day off or at least got paid for it but Mm -hmm. If black folks had a day off, would nothing run? Let's be real. Would nothing mm. run because we drive the buses, we mm. show for the people around, fast we food. do the cooking at the fast food, we do mm. most of the security work. So mm. if you gave us a day off like we should have had, like everybody else get, I think the city, the world really wouldn't run well because we pretty much run a lot of stuff. 
So mm. with that being said, and honestly, again, we didn't get paid for it. If it's a holiday, a holiday, why didn't we get paid? I just I looked at my paycheck. I didn't see nothing one that said payday. <laughs> it, didn't it didn't say holiday pay. <laughs> so what, what was the purpose of even sliding it in on us? Because we didn't get anything from it, just the name. But you gave it to us after you did the anti-Asian act. Why didn't we get ours first? Did you give mm. it to us because you wanted to hush black people's mouths because we were complaining about the anti-Asian act? Or did uh -oh. you give it to us because you really cared? To me, uh -oh. I just think you gave it to us because too many people complained about the anti-Asian act that you gave them but didn't give us. Mm. And we've been fighting for hours way longer than they've been fighting for this. Mm. That's just my opinion. Mm. Well, you know what? I agree with a lot that you said. And I think I'll go a little bit about how what we talked, what we spoke about beforehand. At first, I was excited. I was like, "Damn, yeah, you know, we finally getting some, you know, somewhere, something." Because we've been wanting something for so long, right? Mm -hmm. We want, want wanting something for so long. Because I respect all people. First of all, I respect all people. So the Asian got the Asian uh, Pacific community got theirs. You know, uh, uh, LGBT LGBTQ got got their month. I'm, I was excited about it. So I said, "Oh man, we finally got something." Then the next day, I don't know what hit me. It might have been Lord. It might have been a sign or something. I say, you know what? This shit just don't feel right. I don't feel like it's mine. I don't. It don't feel like it's mine. You know, uh, when you feel like you're celebrating something for a reason, you know, it's just like mm, you feel it. And I ain't feel it this time. So then, what I told myself because I'm not a political person, I said, this just feels like it got politics written all over it. Fact. All over it, and I said, "Hmm, why would they? Why, why would this happen?" And then I, I, I think I, I thought about this. I said, "Man, America right now is all race is a big thing in America right now, a big thing. More than it feels like race is more so of a conversation now than it was when there was segregation, which is crazy, because now everything is involved into race, division, anything. So, what's the easiest way, you know, to divide us even more? Because you make a holiday in the middle of the night." <laughs> make a holiday in the middle of the night for people, for people, African American people, I guess, right? But African American people, most are in poverty. So how many of them really have the day off? To be honest with you, federal holiday, I did, but I'm not the average African American person. Somebody, a mother of three or four or five, working two or three jobs, you think they have the day off? No. Mm -hmm. But some, but Walmart probably printed out a T-shirt and sold thousands of them and made their money. You know, and everybody in the government had the day off. They voted the bill. So I was like, who's this really benefiting? Because mm -hmm. they didn't, like you said, you said they ain't held no press conference. They didn't educate anybody on what, it's, what it really means. Somebody got the day off and probably Googled Juneteenth and said, oh, okay, that's what we got off for. So it wasn't any type of honor to the day for me to make it feel like it was for us. That's my only problem. So most of y'all going to say, oh, you know, you all can't, you all are not satisfied with nothing. But I, I'm sorry that I read. I'm sorry that I'm very well versed in history. And I'm not OK with scraps. I'm not OK mm -hmm. with just I'm not OK with just throwing me something and saying, like they tell the NBA players, shut up and dribble. Or they, you know, like we, we're, we're beyond those days. Right. I feel like we're always used as a political tool for something because you may not agree with this, and now I'll get your thoughts on this. We're an emotional people. We're a very emotional people. And what's the easiest thing to do when we're emotional people? Tap our emotions. Slavery is a very emotional topic because slavery was a lot of suffering, pain, trauma. And what's the easiest thing to do to touch an emotional people? Feel like you giving them something for an emotional topic. But what they didn't say also passed in the house that slavery is not significant enough to share in education curriculum. So now you have Juneteenth, which nobody knew about, and it's not going to be in history, but so people to learn about in schools. Uh, that's a little fishy. I'm sorry. That's just me. What do you think about that? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe I'm on to something. Maybe I'm not. But you're going to sit there and give credence to slaves being free, but sit there and say slavery is not enough to be in curriculum for people to learn about history. We learn about everybody else's slavery. We learn about everybody else's struggles as a people. I thought we were all inclusive in our history because if people don't understand the history, they're not going to respect the holiday. If people don't understand the, how painful slavery was, why are they going to respect the day the slaves was free? What you think? I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm tripping. Am I tripping? I mean, is this whiskey too strong for me? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm like, 
if people don't, if I didn't know <clears throat> what the 4th of July was, oh, the day America got free, why the hell would I care about this day off to me if I didn't know what it was? Oh, it's the day of, they, 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 they shoot fireworks. That's what, that's what be with me. But they make sure in them history books that we know what the 4th of July is, don't they? Which so is we can, true. So we can appreciate it. But the history for this, one of the, and a lot of people say, Kenneth Owen said this, oh, everybody was slaves, but our slavery was one of the worst in history, comparable to the Jews and all that stuff. Like, it was one of the worst in history. Molested, raped, to my books, written about how to devastate the people, which still today, and I'm not getting no high horse here because I'm not trying to be all philosophical and shit, mentally still destroys us to this day. Are you talking about Willie Lynch? I'm talking about just more than him. It's just Willie Lynch. The whole syndrome for Willie. And see, she's so smart. That's why I already knew she knew about it. It's so many different things psychologically that we're struggling from that people don't even acknowledge. Government out there, I can't say too much about y'all because I work for y'all. I know. So somebody out there listening, like, oh, you can't say that. I don't give a fuck. I'm speaking my mind on an open platform. I would like to see innocent violence stopped because that's something you all control or, or help. Education. No, po- going, going to school in poverty ain't easy. People, we we make it look easy because people rise up out of those struggles, or help with some police reform so people can stop dying for the mistakes that other races make that they get to live for. What you think? Tell me what you think. I don't know. Am I on the something? I'm tripping. Tell me if I'm tripping. I'm talking crazy. What you, what what, I, what I'm saying is crazy. Let me know. No, no. I mean, I agree to a degree with the like for the not having the education on it. And it mm-hmm. But the problem is we don't have the educational because we don't fight for the education for it. Let's be real. We okay. give what they give us. We are okay with what they give us. Like mm-hmm. I disagree with a lot of what history shows in the slave books and a lot of the things, because again, you got to say to yourself, like, honestly, and I know we kind of like on a little bit of subject who sold you into slavery. It wasn't white folks. Black mm. folks sold us first. Nobody mm. came across and got us. Somebody from over there came across here and told mm. them about us because they didn't know about us. Somebody mm. came and everybody gonna say Christopher Columbus. No, he didn't go over there first. Somebody from over there made their way over here. Somebody over here told them about the folks over there because we were slaves in Africa to other Africans. So mm. they told them they sold us for what beer and, and something else. I can't remember yeah. what it was. Just, we weren't even sold mm-hmm. for money. We were valueless to our own people. Mm. So if you're valueless to your own people first, what makes mm. you think other people are going to value us? Because you got to think about it. Who had you first? Slaves were slaves to blacks. Blacks realized they can barter us for other things and gave us to somebody else. Those okay. somebody else bartered us for something else. And okay. then they realized the value of black women's booties, black women's beauty, the melanin of a black brother's skin. So they started utilizing that as well. Even then, if you look at history, blacks didn't like each other then. So even from the dawn of time, mm. we've never liked each other. Mm. So mm. to be mad at just the white folks, you got to be mad at the black folks first. Mm. Because again, it still comes down. Slavery is not going to put that in the history books because if you think about it and use your common knowledge, how right. who knew about Africa besides Africans? Who knew about us besides us? Right. Because we were riding in boats, not cars. There was no mm. internet back then. So who mm-hmm. told them about us for them to want to come across and get us? Somebody mm. else. And then mm. if you look at it, Indians had us too. Y'all are mad at white people, but what about the Indians that had us? Indians had us first. Remember, the uh what you call it, the um Black Wall Street started because the Indians had to give us up. They mm. had to free us, so that's how we became mm. millionaires on Black Wall Street. So being mad at a white person without being mad at the Indians, it's kind of redundant. Don't make no sense. It doesn't. I, I do, Why do people do forget that Indians owed us too? People forgot the Indians owed us and they treated us way worse than the white folks did. They mm. kicked us, spit on us, they, they they beheaded us. They did everything that the white folks did and even worse. People forget about the Indians who treated us bad. And mm. when the white man said, hey, you can no longer keep them, they put us in a little part of Oak, was it, um, Ohio and that's how we became Black Wall Street. So mm. that's why I said you got to know your history in order to talk about some things. You got to talk about everything. Mm. You said don't and be see, selective. Don't be selective yeah. on who you hate. Okay. Yeah, we're very selective okay. on who we hate. We're mm-hmm. going, oh, we're part Indian. Did y'all know Indians owned y'all the slaves too? So why are you claiming part Indian but be mad at the white man? You mm. can't just be mad at one without the other. And mm. Indians don't even like us. So they still look down on you. They spit on us. And y'all are not mad at them, but y'all are mad at the white man every day. Mm. So Ooh. what's been a, what's a good thing about being Indian when they didn't like us? 
They used mm. us just as bad. So again, it's mm. just a whole lot to it. That's why I said to know your history, even Juneteenth, you got to look at all the things, not just a small piece of the pie in order to talk negative about everything. So okay. don't just say, because right now, Indians still don't like us. They still don't claim black mm-hmm. people. They mm-hmm. really don't. Mm-hmm. I could go mm-hmm. into the whole thing because I just, like I said, I was just what? studying on, um, I was just reading on Black Wall Street, which was very interesting. And that's the only reason why I said what I said, because Black Wall Street was very interesting to me. And it was very eye opening to the black people, period. Like literally the hate mm-hmm. we have for ourselves. You should be mad at your own people first. Stop mm-hmm. being mad at the white man first and look at your own people to this mm-hmm. day. We've hated each other and we still hate each other. I mean, Africans look down at you in Africa. They treat you bad. Then they talk bad about us in America. But y'all hated us then because y'all sold us. You sold us first. Y'all turn us. We turn each other real quick. Mm. I think we're the only race I see turn each other faster than we can blink our eye compared to everybody else. And they know that. That's why they don't put everything in the history book. You have to go and think for yourself in order to understand Mm. your own people. You got to think about everything. You got to take yourself back into that time and say, wait a minute. Let me ask myself, who was in Africa? How many white people was in Africa first to tell about it? We didn't have phones. So you got to look at all the things and ask, how did we come to be where we're at? Yeah, yeah. So you saying that, we probably going to have to, in another session, talk about yep. Black Wall Street just all together. That's that's I cool with that me. One. That's cool with me because, so <clears throat> I'm familiar with it, but I, you know, if we're going to talk about it, you know, I'm going to go hit some studying so I can have something to talk about. Yeah. I, don't like, I don't like to talk about anything, just so y'all know. This is why I love her perspective on things because I don't like to talk about something I don't know. So if I say we're going to talk about Black Wall Street, I'm going to go hit some, hit some books and, and and know what I'm talking about before I get into a conversation with her about it. So it's a lot of ways to look at this Juneteenth holiday as we you know as, as we close this segment. It's a lot of ways to look at it, um, but I think the general consumption, consumption here is we don't think that it was, the importance of it was really shown the way that it was released to everybody. It kind of mm-hmm. was ru- it kind of was rushed, and I think like my mom always said, anything made in haste ain't never really, you know, what I'm saying it's not really significant. If you hurry up and make something yep. at the last, it's not, it, it doesn't feel right. So the intentions may have may have been good or may not have been good, you know, maybe maybe not. We don't know. It could have been political. It could have not been political. We don't know. But you got to follow the facts. But however, uh, just did on what she said. We shouldn't be mad at anybody but ourselves if we allowed this to happen, because. We should know what to ask for. We should know what to fight for. We should know what's good and what's not for us. And we, I believe, like you said, this made me think about it. We've made the white man enemy number one. When there's a lot of other people who have messed over, you know, the African-American community. But that's another agenda that's being pumped into us, you know. And uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not anybody's pawn. So you can't tell me who to be mad or make me mad at anybody. If everybody screwed me over, I don't like anybody. I don't. <laughs> that, screwed, that, that screwed me over because it's the same. Like, like I think we talked about this as we close this part. The same way, you know, that somebody white can do something bad to you, somebody black can do something bad to you too. Somebody Hispanic can do something bad to you too. We just got so much more fuel for when it's a white person, which I don't understand. And when I say we, I just don't want to disassociate myself with African American community because I don't think that way, and I don't think you think that way either. Mm-mm. However, we do speak as a community because no one of us is greater than the other. We're trying to help educate everybody here. All right. So that's that segment. As y'all see, so y'all going to see us probably talk about everything. We can talk about some higher level shit at the same time, you know, but we can also, you know, talk about some normal day stuff. So I feel like it's a great conversation to have. And I think this is a great showcase for her to show y'all how much she really does know because she be breaking the shit down. And I ain't going to lie. I ain't even ready for all that. And I'm, I consider myself smart. So y'all can stay tuned for that part of uh, our segment. So uh, let us know what you all think. Feedback is always welcome. Uh, what y'all think about Juneteenth? Let us know. We'll you know, re- re- reconvene and talk about it at a, another episode. Give some feedback to what y'all think about the Juneteenth politics. This is Fresh Off the Press. All right. <laughs> Just wanted to take the time out to thank everyone for your listening and your time. I appreciate everyone's contributions to these preliminary episodes of Forbidden Flavor. We are just getting started. Be sure to follow us on Flavor Your Podcast on Facebook, Flavor and Your Podcast on Instagram, and follow at Marquis Podcast Mailbag on Twitter. We will also be having a website. 
which will be released upon season two release that you all can leave voicemails. So please get your questions ready to submit so we can answer them. No pressure, no pain, no anything. We are here for you and having a good time doing this. So thank you all again. This is part one. Stay tuned for part two. Well, we'll be talking about three sums, why people like them, why they don't like them, why they're good, bad, you know, a little freaky shit like that. So thank you all again uh, and look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. On love. Peace out.